Hi, this is Dr. Justin Marcajani here, and today's talk is going to be on TSH laboratory test and thyroid function. So I just I've seen it so many times in my practice, people coming in saying, "Oh, my thyroid's great," and I take a look at their lab test that their endocrinologist or their primary care physician used to assess their thyroid function, and all we see is that great assessment or that two thumbs up, okay approval is usually based upon a TSH laboratory test. Now on the other side of the fence, we have people that are that have lots of thyroid symptoms. They're constipated, they have fatigue, they have depression, they have hair loss, they have weight gain, um, they have poor energy issues, they have uh, fingernail problems, etc. These are common thyroid symptoms and they're told they are fine and the thyroid has nothing to do with their symptoms because their TSH is also normal, if you will. So again, we have two types of people. We have people that think they're fine, feel fine, but may not be, maybe approaching a thyroid imbalance. And we have people that definitely have all the thyroid imbalance symptoms, but again, are told they're normal. And maybe they even said it's all in their head and even suggested an antidepressant by their physician to address their symptoms as if it's not real. So let's kind of break this down. So we have the TSH. That stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH is actually a pituitary hormone. It comes from the pituitary. It's stimulated by the hypothalamus to produce TSH. TSH basically screams down to the thyroid gland. So this is TSH. It screams down here. This is our thyroid gland. It looks like a little bow tie. And that produces T4. And then T4 gets converted peripherally in the uh, liver, in the intestinal tract, as well as by healthy adrenal and stress function. So you can see most of our markers for, for healthy thyroid function is indirect. It's based upon a brain hormone. And this isn't the best way to look at it because if we're going to look at thyroid function, we actually want to look at the thyroid hormones that are being produced by the body and not just what's being produced by the brain. So it's really important we take a, a full assessment of what the thyroid gland is actually producing. So again, this is your thyroid tissue right here. 90% of thyroid issues are actually autoimmune in nature. So we'll talk about that down here with some of these antibodies. So what's actually happening is our immune system is actually attacking our thyroid tissue. And thyroid hormone then kind of spews out uncontrollably. We may say TSH go up and down. We may have hyper-functioning feelings, maybe anxiety, sweating, um, mood issues, manic to depressive, too low functioning where we have weight gain and we have tiredness and that lethargy, if you will. And you can see the immune system, we have our our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle weapons here, we have the side, the, the shooting star, uh, the sword, and some nunchucks all attacking that thyroid gland. That's kind of the immune system, if you will. And the thyroid hormone that's coming out is, is the effect of the immune system damage. So you can see 90%, I'm going to write that down here, 90% of thyroid issues are actually immune system based. So, so much of medicine is actually focused on that thyroid gland, in which at some point it may be, if the immune system is causing enough damage, that may be necessary. But again, we will always want to get the highest good is to get to the underlying cause. And if the immune system is causing the destruction, well, it makes sense that we get to the actual underlying cause of the imbalance to begin with. So let's take a look at why TSH isn't the best indicator. So first things first, if you have elevated TSH, Elevated TSH is a great indicator of a thyroid condition. And if your TSH is above the, the conventional laboratory range, I think for lab courts, 4.5 and further lab, it's 5.0 and above. But if you're above that, you definitely want to be on some type of thyroid hormone. I have other videos to talk about what specific kinds of thyroid hormone I, I like to, to use, but that won't be in today's video. But if you are above the laboratory range, you definitely will need to get treated for a thyroid imbalance just to be clear of that. So again, we have TSH over here. We have our typical range of 2 to 2.5, which is about normal, 1.8 to 3.0, according to the National Endocrine Society. It's a really healthy thyroid range. So you can see, someone may start to have thyroid symptoms right here. They may start to have thyroid symptoms at a healthy TSH range. But again, without those symptoms, they'll go to their medical doctor, and if their medical doctor is running the standard panel, which is just TSH, T4 if you're lucky, again, you're not going to get picked up for usually about 8 to 10 years on average. So all of this area in here is undiagnosed area. So basically what they're saying is you come in with symptoms, they're telling you you're fine, you're, you're fine, you're fine. What they should be telling you is how our way of assessing you and diagnosing you is totally not sensitive 
So keep getting sick, keep getting sick till our insensitive measurements start picking you up. That's what they should be saying if they're truthful, but they're not. So again, typically if someone will get diagnosed here, usually eight to 10 years after the underlying causes have started in motion. So this autoimmune condition may have started here. You may start to have small symptoms there that maybe are just, you know, you know, written off as aging or just a poor night's sleep or just stress, right? That's the whole idea. So everything's just written off as stress. And again, it may take that amount of time for it to finally be diagnosed. So keep that in mind. TSA isn't the best way to look at things. Now, if you do look at your thyroid function, here are some of the lab tests I recommend. So, of course, we're definitely going to recommend running a TSA. So that's a check. We also want to run T4 total and T4 free. Again, 90%, 98% or so of thyroid hormone is actually total. It's, it's protein bound, meaning um, essentially that it can't bind into a receptor site. So imagine a lock and a key. That is a free hormone going into a receptor site. 98% of hormone can't do that. So you get a good idea of what the, what the gland's putting out with a T4 total. So it's helpful, but you also want to run a T4 free because that shows you what percent or how much of that thyroid hormone is actually usable. So about 2% is actually usable. So you want to look at that T4 free. Now next, T4 gets converted to T3. So you want to see how, how, much, of a, how much of that conversion is taking place. There are important things that are needed to help make that conversion. I have other videos that show you what steps are needed. But again, the 5-deatinase enzyme is a selenium-based enzyme. So selenium, magnesium, zinc, various adrenal stressors are important for healthy T4 to T3 conversion. Again, T3 and total and T3 free are the same scenarios with T4. 98% or so is going to be total and about 2% free. Only 2% of your thyroid hormone can actually have a metabolic effect. And again, T3 is going to be the only hormone that's actually metabolically active. T4 is a storage of that and is totally relied upon for T3 to make that conversion. And again, most thyroid medications are T4 in general. So you're not having an active um, response. So if your thyroid gland's damaged and you're just given synthetic Synthroid or Levoxyl or level thyroxin, you may be one of those higher percent of the population people that have a difficult time making that conversion. And again, T3 uptake is important. We want to make sure we're absorbing thyroid hormone. We're taking it up by the cell. And if T3 is too high, and that could be a testosterone issue, maybe um, revealing PCOS, some type of uh, hyperandrogenism condition. And again, if we have low T3 uptake, that could be a sign of birth control pills or an estrogen dominant scenario where the estrogens are binding up to the thyroid hormone, decreasing the body's ability to absorb it and uptake it. Also, we have thyroid antibodies. We have TPO antibodies that are anti-thyroid binding globulin antibodies. Those would be like the nunchucks and the knife and the Chinese stars above. They're part of the immune system that's going out and trying to repair the thyroid tissue, but also creating inflammation and damage, as you can see. And over time, a thyroid autoimmune condition will actually, the thyroid hormone will decrease over time. And that lowering of thyroid hormone causes the TSH to go higher because the TSH is trying to yell louder to the thyroid gland to make thyroid hormone, but the gland is decreasing in function because the immune system right here is destroying it. And again, other markers that aren't really run too much are going to be our reverse T3. So reverse T3 is like the brake on the, on the nervous system. It's the body trying to slow things down. So when you become stressed and, and various infections and stressors are active, the body will take reverse T3 and reverse T3 comes in and it binds up. So imagine this being reverse T3. It binds up the receptor site so then when our T3 hormone comes by, it can't bind in. So T3, reverse T3, blocks the receptor site for the T3. So now that can't quite come in and have a metabolic effect. So reverse T3 is really important to look at. It. It's usually a sign of congestive liver toxicity issues and stress as well. And also cortisol is really important. Now, most physicians will only look at cortisol from the perspective of Addison's disease being cortisol being really low or Cushing's disease with cortisol being really high. And again, most people fall somewhere in between. So we're not trying to diagnose the disease with cortisol. We're just trying to look at adrenal fatigue. And we know high amounts of cortisol will cause the thyroid receptor sites to downregulate. 
and low amounts of cortisol will decrease thyroid hormone conversion. So we have low cortisol will decrease the amount of T3 we have. So the active thyroid hormone goes down with low cortisol. And if we have higher amounts of cortisol, that's going to downregulate the receptor site so that thyroid hormone can't quite fit into the thyroid gland. You may see elevated reverse T3 with higher amounts of cortisol as well. So it's really important that we get a comprehensive um, thyroid panel to assess if you have a thyroid condition to figure out what's driving it. And you can see after my explanation, TSH is far inadequate to assess and figure out what's going on with your thyroid imbalance, not to mention the infection connection. Infections such as H. pylori, Epstein-Barr, or the, the infection that causes mononucleosis. Also, your city or uh, enterocolitica and other parasite infections actually create or create the environment for this autoimmune condition to take place. Even eating certain foods like gluten and dairy can also set the environment for these autoimmune conditions to take place. And again, whether you're autoimmune or not, the Remedy does not train, does not change in the conventional medical world. If you're autoimmune, Synthroid. If you're not autoimmune, Synthroid. So you can see we need a functional medicine approach. Where we're really getting specific, trying to figure out what's going on, where's the imbalance, looking at the diet, the lifestyle, the stress, the sleep, the exercise, a real functional approach to, to provide a lasting solution. And you can see we need to get a comprehensive blood test as well as a stool test to look for these infections that could be driving a lot of this issue. So I hope this information was helpful for you. And again, more than likely after this video, you're going to feel overwhelmed. So feel free and reach out to me for a consultation so you can at least figure out where your thyroid labs are and maybe if you have an infection or not. And I'll be able to help get you the right information you need. Because again, if you leave these conditions unaddressed or unfixed, these conditions always tend to get worse and worse, never fix themselves on their own. So for more, inf for more information, feel free to check below the video and feel free to reach out. Thanks. Have a great day.